This is a 15 inch woofer that was taken out of a full range sound reinforcement speaker. Notice the black windings. Those are not supposed to be black. Those should be a nice shiny copper color. This woofer is damaged. So what happened? Okay, the next slides in this are going to represent an example of some power ratings that are associated with the speaker. Once again, there's just an examples and to give you an idea of how to interpret the continuous RMS and peak rating. So really, how many watts can a speaker handle? Well, they always show the three ratings on the back. Well, most of the time they show three ratings. There's continuous RMS and peak. So really, what does that mean? And really, how much power can you apply to your speaker when this is all you're looking at? So really, to figure this out, you need to look at the continuous RMS rating. Take that peak rating, toss it out. Don't even consider that for how much power your speaker can handle. Uh, the 400 watts isn't um, really something that, that could probably be accurate. It may be accurate when it was um, when the speaker was engineered to run this, but in reality, you probably never probably never run a speaker into the peak into the peak rating. Okay, but first, um, let's take a look at how the ratings are are set up on the speakers. Now, if you notice, there's 100 watts continuous, 200 watts RMS, 400 watts peak. If you notice the 100 to 200, that's 100% increase. Notice the 200 to 400, that's another 100% increase in power. The differences between those is 3 dB. So it's a, between 100 and 200 watts, 3 dB increase. Between 2 and 400, 3 dB increase. So there's a 6 dB increase in what this speaker can claim to handle as far as power from the, from the 100 watts it's listed as a continuous. Okay, and looking at the decrease in power, it, it's the same thing. 400 watts down to 200, down to 100. It's a negative 3 dB decrease in for each level between the peak, RMS, and continuous. And it's only half the power. So 4 to 2, half, 2 to 100, that's only half the power. So now that we know the differences between the power ratings is in decibels, either you know plus 3 or in negative 3 dB. We, you still have to ask, how many watts can the speaker handle? Well, it depends on how it's being used. Meaning, are you going to be using it for a sub? Are you going to use it as full range? Are you going to be using it for mids and highs? What are you doing with it? That really dictates uh, which power rating to, to look at. So we're looking at the three different levels that they assign to a speaker. Continuous, program, and peak. Okay, so the ratings are telling you exactly the same thing. Each of these ratings is telling you exactly the same thing with what the speaker can do as far as handling power. Now, when you're looking at the continuous program and peak rating, uh, it's important to look at the wattage, but it's also important to understand that the words continuous program and peak reference the amount of time that the speaker can be at that particular power level. So if you're looking at 100 watts continuous, 100 watts continuous could be eight hours. Eight hours straight, 100 watts continuous, no more. In other words, don't add another 3 dB to it. Then that would, be, that would mean that you'd be getting into the program rating. So if you remember the slide before, it was showing that a plus 3 dB is 200 watts. So if you hold a steady, a steady power of 100 watts to it, that's gonna be your continuous rating. Now the program rating, that could be in a matter of of perhaps minutes. It's up to the manufacturer, the speaker really, to put in there um, how, they're, how they are showing their ratings. So a continuous rating um, could be for many, many hours. The program rating could be for just a few minutes. The peak ratings, I mentioned before, toss that out. Peak ratings, um, uh, peak ratings seem to be in the 20 to 50 milliseconds of time that it can handle that kind of power. So look at, let's look at this in a, uh, a real world type of example. Here's a JBL dual 18 cabinet. It shows 1600 watts continuous, 3200 watts RMS, 6400 watts peak. Okay, so looking at it, we're going to toss the 6400 watts out because we really don't want to consider that. So the 1600 watts continuous, 3200 watts RMS. These are some decent numbers, but once again, we probably don't want to run this cabinet, this base cabinet, at 3,200 watts, 3,200 watts continuously. 
it's not rated for that. Okay, so which power rating do we want to use? Well, in live sound, single speaker cabinet, let's just say we're going to run a full range. We want to use a program rating, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. This is going to get us the kick drum, it's going to get us the bass, it's going to get us vocals, it's going to get us everything in there. So it's probably safe to use a program rating because we want that little extra moment of time, the program rating time, so we can feel the kick of the kick drum or perhaps in the note of the bass. Now, if we're using a single speaker cabinet as a mid-high, we want to use a continuous rating because we're really not going to be getting too much of any, any impact instruments going to it, into the mids and high cabinet. So anything from 120, 150 hertz on up, we want to use a continuous rating. So what about buy and try amplification? You need to follow what the manufacturer has in their information. The individual driver wattages is going to be less than what the overall cabinet wattage is. This is because the individual drivers aren't going to be able to handle all the power that the whole cabinet can as a whole. And you don't want to be applying too much power, even continuously, into a driver that's not, that's not made to handle that kind of power. And if you're unsure of what to do, what to use, always use the continuous ratings that you see on a cabinet or on the individual speaker if you're a buy and try amping. So in looking at it, all the different types of power ratings, use the continuous power for applications that are going to have none or little dynamics. What this means is if you're doing something, if you're going to set up your cabinet, let's say in a buy or try amp system, and if you're running all vocals, um, if you're running um, symbols, anything that's non-percussive, you want to use the continuous rating. You don't want to use the program rating. But if you're uh, also micing up your drums, and your drum kit, uh, all the toms, then you want to use a program rating because the speakers can most generally handle just that momentary hit of sound, that momentary 3 dB increase of power. So for little to no dynamics, you want to stay with a continuous rating. Okay, and the program power, that's usually for a full audio signal. Maybe you can use this for your front of house, which uh, what a lot of people do, especially if you're just using two regular floor range speakers for front of house. You want to use the program power because you want to be able to uh, have the, uh, the kick drum. You want to be able to have the toms come through. You want to be able to feel that uh, when it's played. So looking at the buy and try amplification, use the continuous rating for mids and high uh, projection. That's for vocals, cymbals, guitars. Use the program rating for uh, percussive instruments, kick drums, floor toms, bass. What this does is this ensures that you're not going to damage your speaker or cause any kind of overheating. Just the difference between the continuous and the program rating, even though it, it 3 dB may sound like it's a little, uh, in the previous slides, I think you saw how much it was. It's 100%, 3 dB increase is 100% more power. So it's important to know what instruments and what frequencies that you want to keep within the certain frequency range of your, of your speakers. Okay, so what's the biggest problem with damaging speakers? All right, it's overheating. That is the biggest thing. So overheating, overheating is caused by running too much power to a speaker, an Envil speaker, or even the whole speaker cabinet. The next failure is cone excursion. That's a mechanical failure, and that's when you see sometimes, not very often, when the speaker cone gets ripped from the basket. That is an, an extreme amount of power that is being fed to a speaker to cause that to happen. That rarely happens. Uh, it does happen, but it rarely happens. Your biggest problem in speaker failure is overheating. And that's just cause that is caused from not paying attention to what the speaker ratings are. If you're ever in doubt in what to use, always use the continuous rating of a speaker. That is a good safety net to ensure that you're not going to damage the speaker in any manner. And especially if you're doing any biamping or triamping, it is imperative that you know what the limitations are of the each individual drivers that you're going to be powering. All right.
right, so once again, how much power can your speakers use? The continuous rating or the, or the RMS program rating? Continuous ratings, limited frequency range, mostly for mids and highs. 200 watts RMS in this example here. It's a full frequency range signal, full range input on a speaker. If you have full range, I'm sure I'm assuming everybody does. If you don't, you also have uh, biamping inputs. But the RMS rating is generally safe to use for the uh, main front of house speakers um, if you're running a speaker as a full range speaker instead of the biamping and triamping. Go back to our 15 inch speaker here. So what happened to it? Yes, if you guessed overheating, that's exactly right. And the sad part about this is that this is a very decent speaker, but it was simply fed too much power for too long. This speaker failed uh, during only one show. And as you can tell from the description there, it was being fed close to uh, 1200 watts of power in a continuous mode. Now the speaker was rated at 1200 watts program, but it was actually only rated for 600 watts continuous. So this is, this is a perfect example of what happens when you overpower a speaker. So it's very important to understand the ratings and look at the back. Uh, just look at back the speaker, understand what you're looking at, and know how you're going to use a speaker.